Pathfinding is one of the most crucial components of game AI, responsible for determining the best route for an entity to travel from one point to another. Whether it's a soldier moving to a strategic position, a creature hunting its prey, or NPCs navigating through a crowded town, effective pathfinding ensures that these characters move in a realistic and engaging manner. Unity offers some pathfinding alternatives, such as nav meshes, but this is hard to rely on 100% as it can produce some strange results. The Unity Asset Store is also a good spot to look, but the issue here is you're paying money, often hundreds of dollars for an asset that you're not 100% on how it works. It's unfamiliar code and it can be difficult to adapt or implement into your own project. But stick around, because in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can write your very own A-style pathfinding algorithm in Unity and C-Sharp for 2D and 3D games, as well as a basic state machine for NPCs that utilizes this pathfinding algorithm like what you see here. The video will be completely timestamped for your convenience, so please feel free to navigate around or skip ahead wherever necessary. I'm also going to be splitting the video into two parts. The first part of the video will be the A-star pathfinding algorithm, and the second part will be the state machine for the NPCs. As always, the complete source code and project files for this project will be free to download through my GitHub page, which will be linked in the description of this video. So feel free to fork this into your own project or to browse and compare the code as you need. Before we jump into a new Unity project, I want to briefly go over the different parts of this particular video. First off, I'm going to briefly outline what the ASAR pathfinding algorithm is and give a visual example of exactly how it works. Then I'm going to provide two solutions for implementing the algorithm. The first will be more of the universal implementation that can work in any project. And the second will be built off of my random walker map generator, which you can find here. This solution allows for a more procedural approach to the actual algorithm, but may not be applicable to every Unity project. So if you're more interested in the procedural implementation, there will be an indicator that looks like this during certain parts of the video, telling you to skip ahead with a timestamp. So what is the A-star pathfinding algorithm? A-star is a search-based algorithm used to determine the shortest distance between two given points. It is important to note shortest here. Starting from a specific starting node of a graph, it aims to find a path to the given goal node having the smallest cost. So this would be the least distance traveled or the shortest time. It does this by maintaining a tree of paths originating at the start node and extending these paths one edge at a time until the goal node is reached. So what is a node? If you're experienced with object-oriented programming, then nodes would definitely be a familiar concept. And technically in this case, it's really not gonna be any different. Think of nodes as a point on a grid. And a grid is especially useful for visualizing it because all games, whether it's 2D top-down, side-scroller, or a 3D MMORPG, consists of an invisible grid of varying heights and angles. And for our example today, we will actually use game objects to make up our grid just because it will be a really good way to visualize them as actual objects in our scene. We will have a node class, and the class will contain a list of other nodes that will be connected. These connected nodes will be nodes that are near each other, so that when the A-star algorithm is being performed, it treats each distance equally, and there would be cases where a node has a connection that is too far away, which could result in something like this. Now, depending on our implementation of the algorithm, the nodes will be placed on every available walkable location, and we will set up and define exactly what the connections look like, which if we refer to our grid here, would look something like this. If we take a node somewhere in the middle, we can see that its connections are the eight surrounding nodes here. Now that we have the initial setup, we can actually start to visualize the algorithm properly. This algorithm finds the shortest path between two given points, and it does that basically by beelining to the point and comparing the weights of each movement. Let's say we have point A and point B here. Obviously, we can tell that the most optimal route is the straight line, but there's no way that the algorithm can know that without having to calculate it first. So that's what will happen. It will pick one of the neighbors of the starting node keep track of its distance to the endpoint, and cycle through the other neighbors. If it's found the most optimal neighbor, then it will continue moving from there until it comes up with a straight line. But what happens if there's a barrier in the way that blocks these two points? Well, fortunately, the algorithm wouldn't do anything different other than reaching this point before the barrier. And since these two are no longer connected, it would find a way around it using one of its other neighbors. And like that, it found our optimal path once again. While doing this, it keeps track of a few things which are defined in the algorithm as the F score, G score and H score. The G score is the cost of the path from the start node or how many moves it took to get there. The H score is a heuristic which estimates the cheapest path to the goal, and the F score is the values of the G and H score added together. When performing the algorithm, it considers all of these values to determine the overall optimal path from the start point to the end point. A really good in depth explanation of how the A star algorithm works is by Sebastian Larg, which you can find here. Let's jump into the first part of the Unity implementation and get this coded in. So, opening up a brand new Unity project, we're first going to set up the scripts that we need for this. 
I've built a simple scene in the background that I'm going to use, but these are purely visuals. I haven't set up any colliders or rigid bodies, the scene just acts as a way to visualize exactly what we're doing. We'll start by creating a scripts folder, and inside this folder creating two scripts, node and a star manager. Once those are set up and compiled, let's begin with writing up the node script. This script will be nice and simple. Our variables will look like this, public node, which we can call came from and a public list of nodes, which we will call our connections. There will be a public float for our G and H values, which we will call G score and H score respectively. And finally, the only method that will exist in this class, public float F score, which will simply return the G score plus the H score. Let's return to our Unity project and set up the node object. First, let's start by creating an empty game object in our hierarchy, which will be our node. If you haven't already, reset the transform back to zero and let's give it an icon. The color and shape doesn't matter, so feel free to choose whatever one you want. Inside of our game view, ensure that you have the gizmos tab selected so that we can see the icon during gameplay. Next, let's add our node script into the inspector. We can do that either by selecting add component and fighting node through there, or by dragging the script directly from the project folder into the inspector. Once we have that in, let's drag the node object into our project folder to create a prefab instance of it. This way we can use the nodes through different scenes wherever necessary and don't have to keep creating instance of the object. We can then delete the node object out of this scene. Now's the time if you're following for the procedural method to skip ahead to the timestamp shown here. Next, let's create an empty game object in our hierarchy called node parent. This will just be so the node objects don't clutter up the hierarchy and we can collapse the parent object whenever we need. Again, reset the transform for this object and let's drag in our node prefab as a child of the node parent. Let's then adjust the position of it to make sense within our scene. To begin, I'll just create a horizontal line of nodes separated by about a two unit distance. For your project, you can make the nodes as close or as far as you'd like. But remember, if they're too far apart, when the pathfinding occurs, it might produce some odd results. So a good practice would be to use consistent whole units, generally between one and three units apart. Once we have our first node set up, we can just duplicate the node object and move the next one further down the line. Once we have our horizontal line of nodes set up, we can start to add our connections. The way that the connections work will be just by dragging in the nodes that are adjacent to the node we're currently working on. For example, this node on the left can only connect with the node immediately to the right of it. So we will find that node and drag it into the connections list. Then for the next node, we will drag in the nodes to the immediate left and immediate right of that one. Continue that process until all nodes have their appropriate connections. Now that we have the connections set up, let's quickly make a tool to ensure that the connections are set up correctly. This step isn't necessary, but it's a good sanity check, especially when it comes time to dealing with a large group of nodes. Inside of our node script, let's make a method called onDrawGizmos. This is a Unity engine specific method, which is super useful for debugging while using the editor. We'll basically draw debug lines between the node and its connections and just move the nodes around to make sure that our nodes are all connected to the correct neighboring node. We'll first set the gizmos color to blue, then we'll check the connections count is greater than zero. And if so, we will loop through all contents of the connections count. Then we can draw a line from this node's position to the connecting node's position. Save that, jump back into the Unity, and you will immediately notice the blue line between the nodes. To test if the nodes are set up correctly, we can individually select a node, move it out of position, and see if the connecting line is out of order. If it is, then we can clear up the connections list and fix a backup. As I said, this step is not necessary, but it's a good sanity check. After we have tested and confirmed, we can remove that bit of code from our node class. Next, let's get cracking with the actual A star algorithm. Opening up the A star manager script, we will start by creating a static instance of the A star manager class so that it's accessible from other classes without needing a direct reference to it. In the awake method, we will initialize the instance to be equal to this object. Now let's get into the algorithm. We will start by creating a method which returns a list of nodes called generate path, and we'll have it take two arguments, a node for the start and a node for the end. First, we're going to ensure that it has a default return value, which will be null. If it does happen to return null, it means that there's no available path from the start to the end node. We'll create an empty list of nodes, which we can call open set. This will always keep track of the current group of nodes that we're looking at. We will then loop through all the nodes in the scene and set their G-score to the max float value. Next, we will initialize the values of our start node. We set the G-score to zero and the H-score to the raw vector distance between the start and the end node. Then we can add the start node to our open set list and begin the algorithm we'll create a while loop with the condition that the open set list count is greater than zero. We'll create an int variable inside the while loop called lowest f, which we can default to zero. 
We will then loop through our open set count and find the node in the list that has the lowest F score and set our lowest F value to the index. This is the part of the algorithm that's used to calculate where the shortest path comes from. Next, we create a new node variable called current node, which will set to the open set at the index of the lowest F value. Once we have that reference set, we can remove the node from the open set list. We can then write an if condition that checks if the current node is the end node. If it is, then we have found our optimal path and we can return the found path. Inside this if block, we will create a new list of nodes, which we will call path. And by default, we will set it as an empty list. We will then insert the end node at position zero as the algorithm handles it by backtracking the connecting nodes. We will then create another while loop that checks the current node to the start node. This is where the backtracking occurs. Inside this while loop, we will set the current node to the value of the came from node. Then we add the current node to the path list. Outside of the while loop, we can simply reverse the list by saying path.reverse and the parentheses. And finally, we will say return path. Now, it might look like the algorithm is finished here, but we have specifically placed the condition above the actual neighbor checks as a performance solution so that the algorithm can finish early if the end node has been found before every connection has been checked. So below the if statement, we'll write the final part of the loop that handles the neighbor checks. We'll create a for each block with a node type, which we will call connected node, that loops over the connections list within the current node. Then inside of our for each block, we'll create a float variable called held G score, which will just be used to compare the values of the G scores of the connected node and the current node, so that the node we are updating has the most optimal values assigned to it. We will make this float equal to the current node's G score plus the vector two distance between the current node's position and the connected node's position. After that, we'll write an if statement to check that the held G score is less than the connected node's G score. And if so, we can update the values of the node. They will look like this. First, we will update the connected node's came from node and make it equal to the current node. Then we will update the connected node's G score to be equal to the held G score that we found just before. Then we will update the connected node's H score to be equal to the vector two distance between the connected node and the end node. Finally, we will write an if statement to check if the open set contains the connected node. And if it doesn't, then we can add it to the open set list. And like that, our algorithm is done. If you're following for the procedural method, now is the time to skip ahead to the timestamp shown here. So let's jump back into Unity and test to make sure that this is working. First, you want to create a new object in the hierarchy and call it A star manager. With the A star manager object selected, you want to drag in the A star manager script that we've just written up so that it exists in the scene. Now I have already created a simple AI character controller, which is just a circle sprite, just to show how this is working. And the code looks like this, but it's important to note that if you've gotten to this part of the tutorial, then the NPC and AI setup and code that uses the A star path generator in a proper finite state machine will be in part two, which you can find here or in the description of this video. Anyway, as you can see, when we press play here and follow along with the path list on the NPC controller, it generates a path and drifts along until it reaches its destination before finding a new path. Now, just as a quick demonstration, let's make the node path a little bit more interesting and include some verticality. As you can see, we have a pretty nifty pathfinding system so far. You can make this as diverse and interesting as you want, as long as the connections and nodes are set up correctly to provide some really fun results for pathfinding. Part two of this tutorial will be a finite state machine for AIs and NPCs, which is available here. So be sure to check that out to build on the AI in your game. The remainder of this video will be for the random walker generator method. So feel free to stick around for that. Otherwise, if you have any questions or suggestions for more tutorials, leave a comment down below or reach out to me on my Discord server. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and stay up to date on future videos. So welcome to the official random walker aspect of the video. If you didn't follow the first half and haven't set up the nodes or the A star algorithm just yet, backtrack to the timestamps below to get those set up. And if you haven't yet checked out and implemented the code from my random walker generator tutorial, check that video out here. Assuming we're all caught up and have a map generated when we press play in the editor like this, we can dive into the random walker generator script and start to build on it. Before we do that though, let's create a new script in our scripts folder called NPC controller. If you've already done this step from earlier in the video, when I went over it, you can skip this completely. Inside our NPC controller script, copy the variables at the top here and the two functions update and create path like this. Back in Unity, let's create a simple AI character by adding in a circle sprite, update its color to a pinkish red, resize it to 0.5 in the X and Y values, and then adding in the NPC controller script to it. Let's drag this object into our project folder and delete it from the scene. We'll be using this a little bit later. I know I'm kind of skipping over this part, but in part two of this tutorial, we will build on a proper finite state machine for the AI. So I just want to create a simple one that we can use for testing immediately without having to go into too much detail of exactly what it's doing. Anyway, 
Jumping over into our walker generator script, we'll start by adding in a couple of new variables. First, we'll create a reference to a public node, which we can call node prefab. Then we can create a list of nodes called our node list. Then we'll create a reference to our NPC controller, which we can just call NPC. And finally, we'll have a private bool, which we can just call can draw gizmos. We'll scroll down below our existing methods and create five new methods. Create nodes, create connections, connect nodes, which will take in two arguments. Both will be of type node, and the first one will be called from, and the second will be called to. Spawn AI and on draw gizmos. Let's first work on the create nodes method. We'll create a nested for loop, which will loop through the grid length at zero and one. Then inside the nested loop, we will do an if statement that checks if the grid at index x, y is equal to a floor tile. If the condition is successful, we will then create a reference to a new node, which we can simply call node, and set it as the instantiation of the node prefab at the vector two coordinates of the x and y index. And as always, setting the quaternion value to default. In this part as well, because tile maps deal with int values, the actual coordinate positions versus where we want the node to sit is at an offset of 0.5 in the x and y coordinates. So we will just add that to both of them in this instantiation. Finally, we'll add the created node to the node list. Next, we can move on to the create connections method. This is where the procedural connections of each node occur so that we don't have to hand select neighboring nodes and the code can do that for us. We'll create a for loop here, which loops through the node list and inside the for loop, create a nested for loop. But instead of the J value starting at zero, we want it to be equal to the outer for loops I value plus one. This way we're comparing the node to all other nodes and not connecting it with itself. We'll then do a check here, which checks the vector two distance between the node list at I and the listed J's position. And if it's less than or equal to one, then we can call the connect nodes method and pass it in the node list items at I and J as our from and to. Since we're connecting our nodes, we want to make sure when we do one connection, we also do it the opposite way as well. So we will again call the connect nodes, but our first argument will be our node list at J and our second will be our node list at I. That's it for the create connections. So we can work on the connect nodes, which will be simple. We do a check to see if our from and to nodes are the same, then to just return out of the method as we don't want the node to be able to connect to itself. In a new line, we can then add to the from nodes connection list like this. Next, we'll work on our spawn AI function. We'll create a reference to a node that we can call random node and make it equal to a random node from the node list. Then we can create a reference to the NPC controller and instantiate the NPC prefab at the transform of the node that we found just before. Then using our reference to the NPC controller, we can set the current node of our AI to be the node that we found. Finally, let's get into the onDrawGizmos method. We'll start by doing a check if the canDrawGizmos is true. If it is, we can set the gizmos color to blue. Then we loop through our node list count. Within the loop, we loop again through each individual node's connection count. Finally, we can call the gizmos draw line method and have it draw from the node position to the connected nodes position. Now, before we save and compile, let's make sure all of these methods are being called correctly. At the end of the create walls method, we can call create nodes. At the end of create nodes, we can call create connections. And at the end of create connections, we set can draw gizmos to true, and we call our spawn enemy function straight after. Let's jump back into Unity, let that all compile. With the walker generator object selected, let's fill out the variables. The node prefab will be the node that we created earlier in the video. We can drag the prefab in directly from the project folder, and we can drag in our NPC prefab that we created just before as well. Before we press play, make sure that our A star manager class exists in the scene as well. The easiest way to do that is to drag it into the generator object and let the object handle both these classes. And like that, we can now press play. Immediately, we can see the AI running around. And if we have our gizmos turned on, we can see all of the connections. Let's take this a step further for a moment. Let's go back into our walker class and comment out the onDrawGizmos function. Let's now open up the NPC controller class and quickly write up a debug to draw the paths. Start with writing up a new onDrawGizmos method. Then we want to check if the path counter is greater than zero, then we'll draw the paths. Again, we will set the gizmos color to blue and looping through our path count, but this time starting at one, we will call the drawLine method starting at the index i and drawing it at the index at i minus one. Hit save and jump back into Unity and let it compile. And when we press play, we can immediately see each path gets drawn out as the AI moves around. That'll be it for part one of this video. For part two, we'll be building a fully working state machine for the AIs to give them more complex and unique behavior. So definitely check that out to fully utilize the power of the A star pathfinding. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with everything I'm working on, like the video and leave a comment down below of what you wanna see next. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys in part two.